Now, in this video, I want to look at some basic transport functions. This is actually a really important video because there are a lot of foundational functions here for you to learn about. Now, we have the transport controls that are available here, and that is available, as we know, by right-clicking and enabling transport. But we can also get a dedicated transport window, and we can open it from here, and I'm going to go to transport, and the shortcut for that is command and one on the numeric keypad. So I'm going to bring that up, and we have a menu here where we can show or hide different options for it. And I'm going to leave these basics enabled for now. Now, at the very left, we have an online button which puts Pro Tools online so that playback and recording can be triggered from external time code. Not something you'll normally need to do, but if you do want to do it, you got to make sure that the count off is disabled to enable it. And you see this waiting for sync message at the bottom. We're going to leave that off for now. Now we have return to zero and this locates to the beginning of the session. So right now, for example, if I click here, we'll see the insertion point there. And if I hit this, it jumps back to the beginning. So wherever this insertion point is, return to zero, will bring it back and we can use the return key as a shortcut for that. And on Windows, that's enter. Now I'm gonna click here for the insertion point in the middle of this audio file. And if I hit the space bar, it'll start playback from there. Shift is down my spot. If I hit stop, the insertion point remains there, and if I hit the spacebar again, Shift is down my spot. it starts playback from the same position, and then when I hit spacebar, it reverts back there. Now, this is dependent on this setting over here called insertion follows playback, and that's disabled by default. So it means that the playback cursor, or this edit cursor, will remain where it is each time we hit start and stop. It'll revert back to there. Now, if I have insertion follows playback enabled, and you can toggle this with the shortcut key N, and that's N when keyboard focus is enabled. And if you, let's say, have keyboard focus enabled in another window like that, you can always hit Control N and that'll toggle this function. But I'm just going to put keyboard focus back there. So with this, the behavior is different in that this insertion point will follow playback and wherever we hit stop, it'll move to there. So if I hit space bar, shift is down my spot. And I'm going to hit stop. And now it remains there. If I hit play again or space bar, in slow time. It continues from that same position, hit stop, and it remains there. So that's the insertion follows playback. Again, a foundational kind of function in how you want to work in Pro Tools. And you'll notice that I'm in slip mode, so I can freely position the cursor anywhere, and it's not snapping to the bar line. Now, let's say I position it here. We have rewind, so we can tap on this, and it'll rewind. And I can keep my finger on it, and it'll rewind continuously like that. And there's a shortcut key for that. We can use one on the numeric keypad. So if I tap one, we'll see it's moving back and two is gonna go forward. And this is dependent on a preference that we have set up. Under preferences, under the setup menu, when we're in the operation tab, we have numeric keypad behavior. And when it's set to transport mode, we can use these single digit keys on the numeric keypad for one for rewind and two for fast forward. Now, the next button over here is to go to the end, and that locates to the end of the session. And if I press that, the end of the session is just the end of this one clip because that's all that's in here. But I can click there, and we can use the shortcut option return to locate to the end. So return locates to the beginning. There's the cursor right at the beginning. And option return locates to the end, and that's enter on Windows. So control and enter on Windows. Now, we know that spacebar will stop and start playback, but we have dedicated stop and play key, and that's zero on the numeric keypad. So if I hit zero, Shift is down my spot. I'm starting playback, hit it again, and it stops. And again, it's reverting back here because the insertion follows playback is disabled. But we have a right-click menu with different playback options. For example, we can play back at half speed. Shift is down my spot. But we can also invoke that function by just hitting shift with the space bar. Shift is down my spot. And that's either on Windows or Mac. And we can also shift click the play button. Shift is down my spot. Now we can control click on Mac and that's start click on Windows to toggle through the different options that we have here. So we right click, we see we have half speed, prime for playback, and then we have loop. Again, we can get to it by that or by control clicking or right clicking. So let's say I want to loop that area. Shift is down my spot. Shift is down my spot. Shift is down my spot. I'm going to right click and just disable that. And then we have dynamic transport, which lets us decouple 
the playback location from the timeline selection. It's kind of advanced stuff. It means we can start playback from anywhere on the timeline without losing our timeline or edit selections. I don't want to get into that now. It's a more advanced function. Maybe we'll look at that later in this series. Now we have a record button over here and this arms Pro Tools for recording and the button will flash when it's record armed like that. And then we just click play to start recording. Now this will only work on record enabled tracks. So for example, if I wanted to record on this track that's called vocal, I would record enable that. And then you see this little indicator here, indicating that the record enable status is active for at least one track. So we do that and then we record arm and then hit play to record, but we'll explore recording obviously in a lot more detail. We can also begin recording immediately by pressing F12 or by pressing command with the space bar and that's control space bar on windows or when we're using the numeric keypad in transport mode we can simply press three so lots of shortcuts to jump into recording again we'll explore that more when we do some actual recording now we can right click here for some advanced options as well we can loop record and do destructive punch in quick punch and these last options will might not be available on your pro tool setup it's only on the higher end pro tools versions but we'll explore some of the more common variants of that when we get into recording so we've seen that this is the uh, track record enable indicator we also have an input monitoring indicator when we have a track in input monitoring mode at least one of them like that this will light up to show us that now here we have a pre-roll function that we turn on or off by clicking on it and during playback or record, it specifies the amount of audio that plays before the cursor position or the selection. So for example, let's say I put my cursor there and I have pre-roll and this is set. These fields are bars, beats, and then ticks. So I have this set to a bar before. If I hit playback now, it's going to start from a bar before here. It's love time. What time is it? And then when this I hit stop, so it jumps back to here. So I can, of course, change the values in these fields. Now I can click in there and type in a value and we can use the period key to move between the fields. So let's say I want it to be maybe only two beats and no bars, but just two beats before. I can type in two there, hit return. And now when I hit play, it'll start two beats before this flashing insertion point. What time is it? And same thing works with the selection. If I have that, it's gonna start two beats before there. Of time. What time is it? Now for post roll, during playback or record, it specifies the amount that plays after the end of a timeline selection. So let's say I put that and I'm gonna put that to one bar. I'm gonna hit return to capture that value. Now if I hit play, it'll play a bar past the end of this. What time is it? Kiss is on my neck. And then it stopped on its own due to the length there. And same thing, we can tap in there, type in a value and use the period key to move through these fields and then return to capture the value. Now here we have some really useful information and this is mirrored here when you have this enabled in the toolbar on top, we have the pre post roll and fade in values in the start end and length fields. So start specifies the beginning of the play or record range and we can set it by again, clicking in here and typing in a value. But right now we have a selection. So it's showing what bar, what beat and what tick based on a subdivision of 480 ticks per quarter note. So it's starting on the seventh bar, the second beat, the 47th tick after that. And then it's showing the end position. And again, because we're in slip mode, this is all freely editable and we can, let me just undo that. We can just click again with the smart tool and clicking there to get my selection. And as we drag there, it's updating and showing the end position and then the length of it. Now, if I'm in grid mode, of course, this is gonna conform to even values we have bar eight and bar 10 is the end and then it's two bar length. So it's a lot more easier to see and understand when we're snapping to a grid like that. And finally, in this video, I just wanna to touch on the nudge function. So we've seen how the grid works. Well, the nudge, which gives us the same ability to determine values either from the menu there or by typing in. And again, we can use the period keys to move between the fields. There's key commands to move through the values, but I just wanna kind of give you a quick idea of this. So right now, I'll set it to quarter notes. I'll just hit return so that the field is no longer active. And then we can use the period key to move forward or nudge forward the selection. And I can use the comma key to nudge backwards. So very useful in various different workflows, which we'll look at later in the series. And same thing with the insertion point. Say I click here and I can now use the period key to move it forward or nudge it forward by, again, the value that's determined there. 
and the comma key to nudge backwards. So there's a lot to digest here, I know, but I suggest that you get familiar with some of these basic key commands for basic navigation because they're functions that you'll be using repeatedly as you're working. We'll continue with more in the next video.